mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Romilly and welcome to this uh, podcast on Photoshop, Lightroom and Photography. This is episode number two and today we are going to talk about dodge and burning. Now what is dodge and burning? Dodge and burning is a technique where you brighten or darken locally some parts of the photo. Now why in the hell would you do that? Well, there are three reasons to it. One, because um, it gives interesting lights. Imagine you have a wall and this wall is evenly light. You know, the light is the same all over the wall. It's boring. Now, if you put a little stroke of light on that wall, the light becomes interesting. And that's what photography is. The, you know, writing of the light, the quality of the light. Better is the light, better is your photos. So that's the first reason. Because you get more complex lighting, so they are more interesting and so they are nicer. That's the first reason why we dodge and burn. The second reason we dodge and burn is to direct the eyes of the viewer. The eyes go to the brightest part of the image and they go away from the darkest part. Let me show you a little example. Here we have three photos. First photo, that's the raw file just out of the camera. As usual, same technique than last week. I underexposed the photo a little bit, you know, so I would get all the details in the sky hidden in the raw file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the standard uh, raw development, which is here. And now we do the dodge and burning, which is that. Okay, now let's compare the two, with and without dodge and burning. You see the difference? The one with the dodge and burning is a bit more interesting. It, you know, the eyes are drawn to some parts of the image. And that's what we're going to do today. This is actually the photos we're going to be using in this tutorial. Okay, and the third reason why, it's because it's just cool. Dodge and burning is cool. And one thing you should know, it's been around for a very long time. Even in the film days, it was used by labs big time. Because, you know, driving the attention of the viewer, making more interesting light has been around since, uh, uh, you know, the 50s and I, I, maybe even before that. So I say, let's get to the tutorial. And let me show you how you can do it just using Lightroom 4. Bonjour, so here is the tip of this week. This is a photo of Montmartre, the city I live in Paris, an area of Paris called Montmartre. It's a very old part of Paris, which is beautiful. I often go there to make photos. And um, actually, this is like a two-tip type of tutorial. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, retouch this photo so it kind of looks a bit better. And then I'm going to do the dodge and burn tip that I talked about at the beginning of the show. So so we get a, a progressive real before and after. I'm going to right click on the photo and create a virtual copy. Okay, and I'm going to work on the virtual copy. So this is the raw file. Um, it's like last week episode, I took this photo right into the sun, underexposed it. So you see the first part of the photo is pretty dark. The top part of the photo is pretty light because you know we have a lot of contrast, but thanks to Lightroom 4 and its powerful features, we are gonna be able to do something about it. So first thing first, I'm gonna bring down the highlights uh, so that we see uh, a bit of the sky here. Then I'm gonna open up the shadows, okay? And um, I'm gonna do a neutral density filter because the sky is still too bright. So I press on neutral density filter I press on Alt so that we have this little world reset you know, that appears here. And now I'm going to back down my exposure and I'm going to click and drag and make this the sun, uh, you know, make the, the sky appear more. If I go down even further, I can even boost a little bit the saturation and uh, maybe uh, bring down the highlights even more so we get more details in the sun. Maybe bring this even further down. Okay, see before the neutral density filter, after, makes a big difference. Okay, uh, next I'm gonna change a bit the temperature because it was warmer, it's a bit cold. So I'm gonna just, you know, just uh, on the total creative decision, bring the temperature a bit to the right and the tint a bit to the right. So we get a more, uh, you know, sort of warm feeling here. All right, next, now that I have my um, my colors balance, this is where I do, uh, you know, the, the luminosity is balanced, sorry. Uh, now I'm going to do the whites and blacks. So I press Alt on the whites and I'm going to go to the right until I see some uh, pixels appearing, which means these pixels are 100% white. Okay, I can keep on going. Okay, about this. 
And now I'm going to go the opposite. I press Alt and I'm going to get the blacks to the left until I see a, a bit of pixels which are black, meaning they are like 100% black. And I let go. So it's already quite a change. Um, maybe I'm going to contrast this a little bit more. Yes, something like this. Okay, so that's the first step. It already looks a lot better because this is where we started and this is where we are. So, uh, you know, Lightroom 4 settings are really amazing. What you can do with just a few sliders, I'm always amazed at that. Now, we're going to go a bit further and get into the real tip of the week, which is a dodge and burn, ladies and gentlemen. So, I right-click and I'm going to create a third virtual copy because I want to show you the various processes real fast. So, as I explained, the theory is that... Um, more interesting and more complex and more partially let an object is, more it's interesting. More the light is uniform, more it's boring. Let me give you a demonstration of this. So I'm gonna go into the brush. That's the magic tool to do a dodge and burn within Lightroom 4. I'm gonna go for the, um, I'm gonna go for the exposure and I'm gonna make the exposure just a little bit more and I'm gonna make a little circle uh, around here just to uh, create, uh, uh, you know, extend the light from this to the bottom to uh, make it if there was a spotlight. There was a spotlight, but it was not strong enough. And I think it's interesting to make it st make it stronger. So if I go and take the exposure a bit more up, it gets really strong and fake. But if I let it go down, it and kind of looks cool. And one new option in Lightroom 4, I can even make it match the color there by warming it up. You see, now we have a little spot here uh, and I think it makes a more interesting light. Let's do the same thing with this one. So I make my brush smaller. Or oh, one thing I didn't show you is that, you know, I'm at, uh, my feather is at 100, meaning it's a very smooth brush. Uh, the flow is at 100 as in density is at 100 because, you know, I prefer to uh, change the power with this option than this option for this technique. Okay, so tac tac, I make another spot here. So now we've got uh, another spot. Okay, that's already more interesting. Now I'm gonna go on to another part of the photo. So when I do that, I always click for a new brush, new brush. And now I'm gonna make another spot here on the trees. You know, just like if the, you know, if the light from, the, from this uh, spot, from this lamp went onto this tree there. And um, I'm gonna make same thing here. Now, why did I do a, sec a separate brush? Is because now I can change this, make it stronger or lighter without affecting the first two spots, which I liked. So every brush stroke is a new brush stroke, or every like different type of brush stroke is a new brush stroke. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm gonna make a new brush stroke and make the same thing on the uh, on the wall here. I'm just gonna make a little circle and. Uh, Kind of like if the light would you know go the whole way here so let's see if, it, if i make it further or less maybe something like this okay and now um so you see uh, on these settings i just have the exposure maybe i'm gonna put a bit of yellows also on that one last brush yeah make it more interesting there all right and uh, next is this building here so let's click on new brush I think this building could be more interesting if it was a, a LED, you know, with a different light. So I'm going to make also a little brush stroke here, uh, real quick, make it make it a bit bigger maybe. Okay, now I find that my brush work is a bit too big. So what you can do is press the Alt key, your brush becomes a, a minus, it becomes an eraser. And I can erase, you know, uh, I just want to make it partial. I want to partially let that... Uh, that building, and I think it makes it more interesting. That's the whole idea. Okay, next, I'm gonna make a new brush stroke and maybe I'm gonna fake something here. If there was some kind of light here. Uh, very small, maybe a bit stronger. No, not stronger, just a little bit, a little hint there. And I'm gonna make one more. So you can go on and on for hours and more you do it, more it can get interesting. I'm gonna make another brush stroke, just like if there was another lamp which was the case actually, that would cast a, a, a light ray here. So make it a bit bigger, make it more in the corner and make it a bit more yellow, something like that. Okay, I think it's too big, so I'm taking my eraser and it's only gonna erase from the, uh, okay. 
Now, uh, and one last thing. So this is before the brush strokes. This is after the brush stroke. See how I've relighted the whole photo? I mean, the photo originally was already not bad, but now it's getting really interesting. And the funny thing is that when you just do it, uh, usually you, you think it's it, it looks fake, like people are gonna see it. And uh, sometimes uh, if I do it and I don't see the picture for a week or two, I, I cannot even tell, did I dodge and burn this photo or not? You know, Of course you have to make it subtle, but you know how it is when you take night photos, sometimes this, you know, city lights can really cast some re, uh, ray lights, you know, so it's, it's, you know, our eyes is kind of used to that. Okay, and one last thing to make it even uh, more interesting lighting, I'm, th I'm gonna go for a, a little um, post crop vignetting, just a little bit, you know, and as I, as I explained in the middle, you see the, the eyes is gonna go toward the lighter part of the photo, Sarah. So the light is gonna go here, 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 you know, it's, it's really gonna get the, the eye inside the photo. Okay, so let me show you. This is where we started. Now we first did this, not a bad, you know, good student, and now we went to this. You know, it's uh, quite an evolution, but I do this on every photo and I think, um, it's it's really interesting. I, I remember uh, at first when I was doing that, I had the feeling I was really cheating because I really really was impressed by how it would change a photo. And then um, uh, a friend of mine showed me some, um, or actually didn't show me, but explained me uh, because he's quite an old man and worked in uh, in the fifties and the sixties and uh, with professional photographer and explained me how a very famous photographer, Mr. Um, Cartier Bresson, I think it was had this photo of kids playing in the city and uh, and they had like 50 parts of the photo that I just did like with little dodge and burn, you know, make it brighter there, make it, it uh, you know, uh, darker there. And apparently this has been going on for like, uh, you know, a hundred years as a technology of uh, dodging and burning. So this is not new to Lightroom 4. This has been going on for a while. Okay, so that was the tip of the week. Um, I hope you like it. A uh, couple of um, things I want to show you before we leave the tip is uh, if you if you watch this show on YouTube, uh, please subscribe by clicking here. This way you will get an email every week with the new episodes. It should be coming out every Monday, but if you subscribe, you are sure to get them. Okay, another way to subscribe is if you go on, on iTunes uh, and you go on to the iTunes store and you type, for example, uh, my name, which is Serge Ramelli. I'm from Paris, Serge Ramelli, Serge Ramelli, I'm from Los Angeles, and you press enter, and uh, well, here, podcast, you see there's a podcast, you can click on the podcast, and you can subscribe for free, and you will get automatically uh, on your Mac or on your PC, the podcasts every week, so that's two ways to stay in touch with me, you can also follow me on Google+, which you will find on my website, if you go on, for example, on the blog, uh, you have a link there to uh, my Google Plus and YouTube channel. And uh, if you go on the App Store and you like more of this training, uh, App Store is just a link on my website. There is all my training there. It's uh, uh, it's two hours courses for most of them and it costs $6. You can either click here and get them on your iPhone or iPad or you can click here and you get directly the videos in HD with all the source files. So it's really a steal for $6 because not only it took me months to get the source files, but it took me months to learn these techniques and share it with you. But uh, anyway, I like to do it. Apparently people like it, so I keep on doing it. And uh, voila, that's about it. Let's get back. Okay, so I hope you liked the tutorial. And uh, before I leave this episode, I just wanted to give you some inspiration. And this week's inspiration is my mentor, Scott Kelby. You probably all know him. Uh, he's an incredible teacher. He's been uh, around photography for a very long time. He's the Michael Jackson of photography. And I have been an NAPP member for many, many years. And it's an incredible association where you get incredible discounts and very good tutorials. Also, I subscribe to Kelby Training and I've been subscribing since day one. I've done dozens and dozens of classes there. You've got the best instructor on the planet. Um, I don't get any commissions for saying that. It's the truth. I am a professional photographer today because of Scott Kelby and because of NAPP. So that's why I wanted to mention that uh, because it's a true inspiration for me. Plus Scott is an amazing and funny guy. So thank you for watching this episode and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.